How are you? Good, thank you. Welcome to the tribe table. I'm excited that you're here. I was even more excited when you walked in with that shirt. Hello. <laughs> I was like, hey, my people, come on in. Yeah. Hey, this is awesome. So um, tell us a little bit about why you're here at the Bentonville Film Festival and specifically why um, your movie kind of you felt like qualified for, for being here. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be at the Bentonville Film Festival. I've heard about this film festival for about two years now, which is okay. saying a lot because it's such a young festival, really, on the yeah, circuit. Four so years to total. have mm -hmm. heard about it for a couple of years is pretty mm -hmm. spectacular, okay. I think. I have a film. I'm the director and a producer of a film called Abducted in Plain Sight. Yes. And the story is about a family, the Brobergs, whose daughter... Mm -hmm was kidnapped by the family's best friend and neighbor twice. Which is so um, It's God. unbelievable, mm -hmm. yeah. And I was really, uh, I think the reason I did the film was because I, I just really didn't understand how something like this could happen. Yes. And I wanted to figure that out. Yeah. And I think, it, I think it has a lot of, a lot of elements that Bentonville sort of promotes. It's, mm -hmm. a, I mean, we were a three female filmmaking team, team yeah. you know, throughout. There were some men involved, but for the most part, it's been three women mm -hmm. throughout the course of the film. It's a story about a woman um, and her family, mm -hmm. but it's a very female family, and it's talking about child abuse and sexual abuse, yeah. and so I think it's a really relevant topic. Very difficult, yeah. Very difficult. Unlike a, unlike a documentary where you follow a story and you don't really will go know where it's going to go, you are unpacking this story and kind of documenting what yeah, I love that you talk about unpacking it because that was one of the words I used. I also said peeling the onion. Those yes. were the two sort of metaphors that I kept Imagine. talking about during the editing because, because it really was much more of an investigative journey than I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. We had the book and we had sort of an outline of events and the dates that they had happened, mm -hmm. but to really sort of get into the nitty gritty of how this happened right. was, was certainly um, an experience in reading a lot of FBI documents, uh, mm -hmm. reading a lot of court transcripts, listening to a lot of audio tapes that hadn't been listened to for 40 years, and really just trying to, to put the pieces together. Mm -hmm. and, and give it a fresh perspective. Right. I would imagine that while it was happening, that that was, you know, it was very raw and emotional, and so kind of being able to look at it from a different perspective, which is a very you know, powerful thing in storytelling and filmmaking both, so that's great. That's yeah, wonderful. and challenging too, because I think you obviously got a different perspective when you go into something and it's not your story. Yes. What was the most challenging, I think, for me was when, uh, when I stopped feeling. Mm -hmm. We'd been editing it for mm, probably about a year and I just, the language that I was using to talk about it and the feelings, it was just this very pedestrian kind of yeah. approach to it and I didn't feel anything anymore. And I remember going home and just feeling like I'd lost my humanity and and at that point, I talked to my editor, and I said, we've got to stop for a little bit. We've got to just take a break. We've got to step back. We've got to get it back. We've got to get our, our feelings back. And, and we did that. We, he went off, and he edited a comedy, and I went and I remodeled the house, and we didn't think about the movie at all. <laughs> and then wow. we came back later, and we just, it was the best thing, really, that we could have done, because then we were able to feel again. That's amazing. Yeah. That's beautiful. Empathy is a very, it's a, it's tricky. It's tricky. Tricky, because mm -hmm. you go way too deep sometimes, yeah. and yeah, that it's can true. be really hard and yeah. to find those boundaries. And, and to find how to take care of yourself in it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about um, some of the other films or projects that you've been on that maybe um, made this project different in working with a team of women, or maybe you've always worked with teams of women. I don't know. Tell us about that. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky in a sense. My husband and I own our own production company, and so I'm very oh, lucky wonderful. because I have the power to be able to hire a lot Good. of women. Good. I make my living as a director of photography, mm -hmm. which is a, an incredibly male-dominated section of the film industry, more so than directing, really. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. and um, But I don't feel it all the time because I live in a little bubble, and I can sort of pick... Mm -hmm who I work with, yeah. and so I've been very lucky in that regard. Okay. And, and we work on a lot of things, you know, I mean, we're lucky because we've got a, a small production company, we've got some bigger clients, and that allows us in a way to work on projects that we're very passionate about, like Abducted in Plain Sight. Okay. And so that's been really great. What's interesting to me is when 
I go somewhere else and I'm working on a set where I'm hired for a day or I had an interview actually like this, like what uh -huh. we're doing where I'm on this side of the camera, which uh -huh. is not super comfortable for me. <laughs> right. Okay. But, <laughs> a little comfortable. But this is great. Good, good. Uh, but it was an interview and the entire, and everybody was wh white men in their 50s. And I was like, oh, wow, I do live oh, in a bubble. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I've created this world for me that's wonderful. That's and I work with a lot of women who hire me as a DP mm -hmm. and do who I hire. And so it is, it is a little bit surprising mm -hmm. when you realize that things are changing, but not as quickly as you kind of thought they were. Yeah. Well, and also the concerted effort the, the, to go and seek women, because as opposed to just um, taking... And, you know, there's controversy over that too, but you need to well empowered women, yeah. empower women, and yeah. and lifting each other up in that in that way. Yeah, and it's been challenging for me too. I mean, I've worked mm. throughout. I mean, I've been a director of photography for almost 20 years now, mm. and so most of that time I've had male gaffers and male key grips and male more female assistant cameras. Mm. But I've worked with a lot of men who I love. Yes. I adore them. Yes. They're talented. They're my go-to. I don't Good even have to talk man. to them. They know what I'm thinking. Yeah. And so to not be hiring them mm -hmm. and to be able and to go out to find mm -hmm. and cultivate these new relationships after, after having worked with these yeah. guys for 15, 20 years, yeah. it takes a lot. Yeah. It takes a lot to do that. And it's challenging, I think, for women to do that. Yeah. And so it's it's important that we do, do and that the men do it too. You know that we're actively seeking a different perspective. So do you do you have those conversations with those with those men that you're saying, okay, I'm going to do this, and here's why I'm doing it? Yes. Good. Yeah. Because those absolutely. are hard conversations to have. But They're hard conversations, but I'd rather have that conversation than you suck, <laughs> right? <laughs> or I don't want to work with them, or to have them have the wrong idea, yeah, the wrong idea. about it. You exactly. know, and so I, you know, and I hopefully encourage them look as soon as I'm increasing my Rolodex of people too yes. and they need gaffers or they need key grips they do. then I can start handing women's name to them instead of the, the the men's names that has been on that Rolodex forever do you think that the when we're talking about the culture and the changes that are happening do you feel like the perspective of women in film and the fact that it might be a little bit different there's you know if you're if you're working you're obviously working on a story about a mother mm -hmm. And so there was probably a, a you know a connection as a woman to a little bit of what um, what she might have been going through or some other perspective. Do you think that that's becoming more valued and recognized? I think it is. Yeah, and I think our you know I mean I I honestly don't think that that people go to your classic movie in a movie theater mm -hmm. and think about whether or not it was a male director or a female director. Oh. But I think they're thinking about, do I connect with this story or do mm -hmm. I connect with the characters in this mm -hmm. story? And I certainly think that that women on camera are being portrayed in a better way because people are more aware of it, men are more aware of it, yes. women are more aware of it. Yeah. And so I think that helps. I also feel like, especially for my film, three women walking into, I mean, this is a documentary. It's not... Mm -hmm. You don't know exactly what you're going to come across, mm -hmm. but three women walking into a home where we're meeting people for the first time and really asking them to tell us their deepest, darkest, most embarrassing secrets, mm -hmm. it, it made a difference. We cooked together and we did dishes together and we sat on the floor and we played with grandkids together mm -hmm. and, and we talked about things and yeah. it just didn't feel the same. I mean, I can't imagine walking in there with two guys with me. Yeah. I can't imagine it would have been the same. So I think, and look, I don't know, like if I was going into a, a, mm -hmm. a documentary that was a very male dominated mm -hmm. subject matter, yeah. it would be different. You know, I would feel mm -hmm. like maybe I would need some men there so that yeah. the guys felt comfortable or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, mm -hmm. but, but for this particular one, it really made a big difference. Yeah. Sometimes I need to unplug. Sometimes I've got to reboot. Sometimes I just want to sleep. But I always want to connect with you. Get into Brew Moods, aromatherapy lotions powered by a mindfulness app. 